The objectives of this module are to 1. Define whole genome sequencing 2. Explain how whole genome sequencing can be used in food industry to track foodborne pathogens 3. Identify the steps for obtaining whole genome sequencing data and 4. Identify other potential uses of whole genome sequencing. Listeria monocytogenes is a bacterium that can contaminate food. When a susceptible person consumes the contaminated food product, they can get sick up to 90 days after food consumption. Symptoms include flu-like symptoms, nausea, diarrhea, and muscle aches, leading to hospitalization or even death. Although Listeria is not the most prevalent foodborne pathogen, it is one of the most deadly. The CDC estimates that 1,600 people get Listeriosis annually. Of those, 260 people die. In comparison, out of 1.2 million people that get salmonella infections, only 450 die. As a food producer, it is important to make sure pathogens like Listeria don't end up in your ready-to-eat food products. What can we do to find the source of contamination if a pathogen ends up in a food product? Is the bacteria coming from ingredients or our facility environment? A relatively novel way of tracking foodborne pathogens is by using whole genome sequencing. Whole genome sequencing is the most powerful genotyping method to identify sources of pathogen contamination. By obtaining DNA, sequencing it, and analyzing it using computational tools, we can compare all the DNA characters comprising the genome of bacteria. With this information, we can easily identify matches and differences, also called SNPs, in the DNA among different isolates. Other genotyping methods only use one gene or short regions to compare isolates. Whole genome sequencing allows us to see the whole picture by comparing all DNA characters present in the genome. This way, we can be more certain in our conclusions based on isolate comparisons. How can we use whole genome sequencing to look for listeria in a food processing facility or ingredients, and if we find it, to relate it to the one found in our product? First, we need to collect samples of raw ingredients, food products, and swab different areas in the food processing facility. Collected samples are then sent to an external lab for testing. The lab tests these samples for presence of listeria and saves isolates of listeria to examine their genome sequences. Bacterial DNA consists of a circular chromosome and sometimes plasmids that can encode antimicrobial resistance genes or genes involved in causing disease. The lab technician will extract DNA from each listeria isolate by first breaking up the cell wall and lysing the cells. This is typically done by applying heat, shear force, or chemicals. After DNA extraction, DNA is typically fragmented into smaller pieces using enzymes. This is necessary because the most commonly used sequencing technologies cannot sequence bacterial genomes from start to end. A DNA library is prepared by adding a short nucleotide barcode to each isolate's fragments. This allows us to run several samples in the same sequencing run. Sequencing of these short fragments, also called reads, allows us to obtain the code of DNA of each read. Using computational tools and reference databases, the small reads can be reassembled to their original genome sequence. Now the genomes of the isolates can be compared. Bacterial genomes are aligned and the number and position of SNPs can be identified. The lower the number of SNPs, the more likely the isolates have a recent common ancestor and are therefore clones of the same strain. Based on this information, a phylogenetic tree can be created to visualize relatedness of isolates. The phylogenetic tree allows us to see which isolates is most closely related to the listeria found in the food product. With this knowledge, food processors can identify sources of contamination and focus their efforts on improving the cleaning and sanitation in those areas. This is just one example of how whole genome sequencing can be used to track foodborne pathogens in the food supply chain. We can also use this method to routinely check for the presence of pathogens and identify strains that are persisting in food processing facilities. In addition to that, whole genome sequencing provides information about genes encoded in microbial genomes. For example, we may find a gene that encodes a protein which provides resistance to a certain sanitizer. This can help us select a better, more effective sanitizer that the strain will not be able to resist. Whole genome sequencing is also the method used by government agencies to monitor and track foodborne outbreaks. 
These are just some examples of how whole genome sequencing can help track and control pathogens to enhance food safety.